Hello there and welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John Alcampora and in this video I'm going to explain everything you need to know to get started with VLOOKUP. So by the end of the video, you're going to be writing your own VLOOKUP formulas, and you'll also know what causes some of those common errors that can be so frustrating and how to prevent them. Now, I've designed this video to be a follow-along lesson. You can download the Excel file that I used during the video. There'll be a link in the description below the video there. We can download the file and follow along and practice. You don't have to do this, but I highly encourage it. It'll really help you learn faster. So go ahead and pause the video now and download that file if you'd like and we'll jump over to Excel and get started. All right, so I'm here in the practice file on the overview sheet, and here's a list of the things we're going to learn today. So I'm first going to give a definition and show some common uses for VLOOKUP. Uh, you can then follow along and we'll look at how to write a VLOOKUP formula. I'll explain the two main causes of errors for VLOOKUPs and how we can fix those. I'll also explain why VLOOKUP stops at the first match and the sorting myth as well. And then we'll look at how we can create relationships between tables with a VLOOKUP formula. And this video will definitely be packed with tips and shortcuts to help make this process faster and easier. So let's go over to the VLOOKUP definition sheet. And here I have a simple definition of VLOOKUP. And the whole point, the purpose of VLOOKUP is to look for a value in a column and return a result from a cell in a row where a match is found. And this allows us to answer questions about our data. So I have this menu example here. This is a popular example I use or analogy for VLOOKUP with this Starbucks menu. If you've ever ordered food off of any menu, then you've actually done a VLOOKUP in your head. And what I mean by that is the whole point of VLOOKUP is to scan down a column until it finds an item. Let's say we wanna find the price of the cafe mocha. And then once we find that item, we go over to the right to find the price in a different column. And that's exactly what VLOOKUP does. And it always looks to the right. And of course, we'll learn more about this as we go, but that's just one simple analogy to help you remember what a VLOOKUP does. And within Excel, there's tons of uses for VLOOKUP. It's a very powerful tool. Uh, first of all, like I said, we can create relationships between data and lookup tables like we have here for pulling in data uh, from some lookup tables. We can use VLOOKUP for that. We can also use it to search uh, databases and tables to return information based on a name that we're looking up. Uh, we can use it for interactive reports and financial models. Maybe we have a drop down here where we're changing uh, the input and then that's returning different results. So we can use VLOOKUP to drive that. And we can also use VLOOKUP for tax and commission rate calculations. So instead of using some complex nested if formula like we have here, we can use a simple VLOOKUP to look up values within a table like this and return a result. So there are definitely a lot of uses for VLOOKUP, even more than I've explained here, but let's jump over to the write a VLOOKUP sheet and write our first VLOOKUP formula. So I'm here on the write a VLOOKUP sheet and we're going to write a VLOOKUP formula. And we want to answer a question, which is what is the price of a cafe mocha size grande? Now we have our Starbucks menu up here, and of course we could just scan down the column A until we find cafe mocha, and then scan over to the right to the grande column to see this price of 395. And that's exactly what we want to return here in this cell, in cell B15, with a VLOOKUP formula. So go ahead and select cell B15 going to type equals and then the word VLOOKUP. And as you start typing VLOOKUP, you'll see it narrowed down here in the dropdown. And we can just hit tab on the keyboard to autofill that. And then we'll see the four arguments for the VLOOKUP formula. So we have the lookup value, the table array, the column index number, and range lookup. Now, if this is the first time you're seeing VLOOKUP, those can be a bit confusing. So I've also provided a simple definition here of those arguments. And the first one is the value that we want to look for. So in this case, we're just going to select this cell here that contains the word cafe mocha. So that'll put a reference to cell A15 in our formula. And then we'll go ahead and type a comma. And the next argument is the table array. So this is the range that we want to look in. So we're going to select our entire range or a menu here in this case, which would be from cell A4 all the way to D11. 
and that will create the reference here in our formula. Now, one tip at this point right here is to hit F4 on the keyboard, and that will create an absolute reference. So if we were to copy this formula down, our table array range will not move. Now, this is not required, and I'll talk more about this when we talk about errors, but it's just a good habit to get into. If you're using a laptop or a smaller keyboard, you might need to hold the function key when you press the F4 key. So, so far we have the first two arguments, and it's important to point out that VLOOKUP is always going to look in the first column of the table array. So we're looking for this value in cell A15, and VLOOKUP will always just look in this first column, look down this first column vertically. That's what the V in VLOOKUP stands for, is vertical. So it's going to look vertically down this first column here. It's not actually going to look for that value in any of the other columns. The reason we select those other columns is because we're now going to specify the column that we want to return a value from. And that's the column index number or the column number of the value to return. So in this case here, we want a grande, which is the third column. VLOOKUP starts here, with, this will be column one of our table array, tall would be column two, grande is column three, and venti is column four. So we want column three. So we're going to type a comma, and then we'll just type the number three here uh, for the third argument. And then we'll go ahead and type another comma. And the fourth argument is the range lookup. Now this is probably the most confusing of all of them, uh, but this is either an approximate or an exact match. Now, 99% of the time when you're starting out with VLOOKUP, you're going to put false here for an exact match. We can use approximate matches uh, when we're looking up numbers for commission or tax rate calculations, but for the most part, we want to specify a false here. So it's best to just get in the habit of typing false, or of course you can uh, select this and tab into it to put a false here for the last argument. And now that we have all four arguments, Go ahead and uh, close the parentheses and then hit enter and that will do the lookup and return the price of 395. Now, if you do have the practice file open at this point, I encourage you to pause the video and write out the formula if you haven't already. This will of course help you practice and really learn how to write VLOOKUPs. So I just want to take a quick break and ask a favor of you. If you're enjoying this video, please subscribe to our channel. There's a big red button below this video that you can click to subscribe and also get notified when new videos are published. And we also have a free weekly email newsletter that contains tips and tutorials just like this that will help you learn Excel. So I'll put a link in the description below this video as well where you can get plugged in with that. Thanks again and now let's get back to the training. So we're now going to look at the two main causes of errors with VLOOKUPs. I'm here on the errors sheet, and we're again going to uh, do some VLOOKUPs on our menu, and we're going to answer this question, which is how much will this order cost for size grandes? So we have an order here, maybe from some coworkers, and we're going to look up all of those values, return the prices, and then total it up. But we might get some errors while we do this. So let's go ahead and write a VLOOKUP again, right here in this cell, B16 equals VLOOKUP. We'll tab into that. This is going to be our lookup value. I'm going to type a comma here and then select our table array. Now I'm not going to make this an absolute reference this time. Like I said before, you can hit the F4 key right here, but I'm just going to pretend like I forgot that step. I'll type a three here for our column index number to return that third column, comma, and then false for an exact match. Close the parentheses there, and we'll go ahead and hit enter. So that'll return our price of 415, which is great. But now if we were to copy this formula down, we're going to get some errors. And you can see right here, we're getting an error in cell B17. If I hit F2 on the keyboard to jump into this and edit this formula, we can see that our table array, this range here, has moved down. It's moved down to row five, uh, from row five to row 12, and that happened when I copied the formula down. And the lookup value, cafe latte, is outside of that range. We can see it's up here in row four. So VLOOKUP is not going to find this value because it's outside of the table array. So I'll hit escape now, and that's really the cause of this NA error for the most part, is that VLOOKUP can't find that lookup value. So let's jump back up here to cell B16, hit F2 again. I'm going to select my table array, so just select the text here. You can also use a little screen, the shortcut here, if you click the screen tip, that will also select this text right here. 
and then we'll hit F4 on the keyboard. That will create the absolute reference. So now I'll hit enter. Again, we have this uh, formula and I'm going to copy it down. And now we get a result here. I hit F2 here. We can now see that we have this absolute reference. This range is anchored down and it's not moving as I copy the formula down. So when you're starting out, that's probably the most common cause for errors is you just forget to make this an absolute reference, the table array an absolute reference, copy the formula down, and you're going to get some errors. Now, another common cause of errors is that the lookup value doesn't exist in the table array. And that's exactly what's happening here. Uh, one of our coworkers decided to order a light beer from Starbucks might be a little too early for that. So uh, unfortunately, this is not going to return a result here because light beer is not in this list. It's nowhere in this list. So VLOOKUP is going to return an error. Now we can handle those errors with the if error function. And I'll talk about that in a separate video. But to fix this for now, let's just change this to an item that is in the menu. So maybe that we'll give them a caramel macchiato instead. Just going to hit Control C to copy that and then Control V to paste it right here. And now you can see we're getting the result of the price for the size grande. And then finally down here, we're still getting an error for this cafe mocha. And of course, cafe mocha, this term or this word is in our table array. So why is this happening? Well, another common reason is that there's a space at the end of this uh, phrase. So if I just double click into the cell or hit F2, you can see the text cursor blinking right there. And there's actually an extra space at the end of the phrase or the end of the text. And that's causing this to not be an exact match. So extra spaces in your text, whether they're in the lookup formula here or in the table array, you could have spaces at the end of these words as well. That's going to cause a mismatch in the lookup value and return that error. So of course we need to fix that. There's many ways to do that. But for right now, I'm just going to delete that extra space and hit enter. And now we can see we get our result right here. So that should help you with the most common types of errors when you're starting out with VLOOKUP, because of course it can be frustrating when you get errors, uh, but that will help you resolve the majority of them. So now we just want to get a quick total here. We can select cell B20 and use the auto sum function. If we go to the home tab of the ribbon and then we go right here to the auto sum button, we can just click that keyboard shortcut is alt equal sign, hold down the alt key and then press the equal sign. That'll automatically give us this sum formula. Just hit enter and we'll get our result here. We need $15 and 80 cents to take to Starbucks to place this order. So again, I encourage you to pause at this point, practice writing those formulas and fixing those errors. So we're now going to look at how VLOOKUP stops at the first match and the myth with sorting your data. So I'm here on the first match and sorting sheet, and I have the VLOOKUP formula written here in cell B16. I'll just hit F2 on the keyboard to jump into this cell. And the first thing that's important to know is that VLOOKUP is always going to stop when it finds the first match. So again, here in this column, it's looking for the word Cafe Mocha in column A. And we can see now that there's actually two occurrences of Cafe Mocha. However, VLOOKUP is always going to start at the top and look down vertically and stop whenever it finds the first match. So it's going to stop here, go over three columns and return the price of 395. It's never going to find this occurrence down here, even though this uh, has a cheaper price and things like that, it's never going to find this because VLOOKUP always stops at the first match. And that kind of leads to my next point about sorting your data. I commonly hear this myth that you always need to sort your data in ascending order before writing a VLOOKUP formula or in order for a VLOOKUP formula to work. And that's not true, at least not when the last argument is false for an exact match. As we can see here, our data is not in ascending order. We have a W before a C and the formula is still working. Now, if you were looking up numbers for commission rate or tax calculations, and you have the last argument as true, in that case, you would want to sort your data. However, like I said before, especially when we're starting out with VLOOKUP, the majority of the time we're going to look for an exact match and have this last argument as false. And in those cases, you do not need to take the extra step of sorting your data. 
Now, one caveat to that is if in this case here, you did want to return the cheapest price, you might want to sort these price columns in order for this row to be above this row here because VLOOKUP will always stop at the first match. However, again, it's not always required. So just know that you don't always have to take that extra step to sort your data. So we're now going to look at how to create relationships between tables and write VLOOKUPs to look up data on other sheets. So I'm here on the relationships tab and we have some sales data here in this sheet and we want to bring in some data from some lookup tables over here on this lookups, lookup tables sheet. So we have some lookup tables over here. Here we have a list of product names and the categories that those are grouped in. Here we have a list of salespeople and some information about the salespeople, including the region they're in. And over here we have customer IDs and customer names. So we have some lookup tables over here. We'll jump back over to the relationship sheet and we're going to use a VLOOKUP formula to pull in that information. So in this first example here, we want to look up the product name and return the product category from those lookup tables. So this will be some good practice for us. We're just going to type VLOOKUP, tab into that. Our lookup value will be this product name here, type a comma, and then now we're going to jump over to the lookup tables sheet and we're just going to again select our lookup range. Or I'm sorry, our table array or our lookup range. So we'll just select that there. You can see now up here in the formula bar that I have the reference to the sheet name and then the range reference. So right here, again, I can hit F4 on the keyboard to make that an absolute reference. I'm going to go ahead and type a comma and our column index number is going to be two. Uh, for the second column. So we'll type a two there. We can type a comma and then type false for an exact match. Close the parentheses there. And then when we go ahead and hit enter, that'll take us back to the relationship sheet and show the result right here. So now we can copy this formula down. Uh, just select the cell, double click the fill handle, and that will copy our formula down. Now, one thing you can do, one little tip here, is if you have a lot of data, a lot of rows, and you wanna check for errors, if you have the filters turned on, you can just click the filter drop-down menu here, go to the bottom of the list, and we can see we do have some NA error values here in the sheet. So this is a good way to go research those. Just uncheck select all, uh, check NA, hit okay, and that will filter down the rows for just our NA errors. And now we can see the reason here is that we don't have a product name in these cells. We also have a revenue of a dollar. So this might be something weird that we need to go investigate to fill in a product name here, or potentially we want to handle this with an if error statement. And again, we'll talk about that in a future video. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear the filter there. We'll just leave those errors for now. And we're going to do the same thing in this reps region column by writing the VLOOKUP formula. I'm going to explain another little tip here with a screen tip. So again, start, start writing the VLOOKUP. Our lookup value this time is going to be our salesperson. Type a comma there. We're going to go over to our lookup tables sheet. And now we're going to select this range here. Now when your lookup table has, or your table array has a lot of columns, sometimes it can be difficult to figure out which column index number we need to use. However, there's a little screen tip there that appears in the bottom right of our selection that says 8R by 7C. And that 7C tells us that this is the seventh column that we've selected. If we move over here, we can see that changes to 6C for the sixth column. So this lets us know that for our region, we want to return the, or we want to specify the seventh column in order to return the region column. So that's just a nice little tip there. Makes it really easy, especially if you have dozens or even hundreds of columns within your data set. And again, I'll hit F4 to uh, anchor that down. We can go up here, type a comma. We're going to uh, type a seven here for that seventh column. It's also important to point out that that is the seventh column of the range or the table array. So that's the seventh column of our table array here. It's not the seventh column of the sheet. Column K would not be the seventh column. I believe it'd be the 11th column of the sheet but we want the seventh column of the table array that we have selected. So that's important to note there, that column index number is relative to the table array. Comma, we'll type false for an exact match. 
uh, close the parentheses there and hit enter, and that will return our region right here. Again, I'll just double click the fill handle to copy that down, quickly check to see if we have any errors. We do not, so everything looks good there. And we've now created a relationship between this data table and the lookup tables. And when I say relationship, what I really mean is that this allows us to group our data. So to bring in some metadata, group our data, and then if we were doing summary reports or pivot tables, we could then quickly create a summary report based on the region. So maybe sum of sales by region, we could create a report for that now that we've brought the region in here to our data table. So this allows us to group data and kind of fill in the gaps of data that we do not have in our original data sets. And I do have a whole nother video series on pivot tables and dashboards if you're interested in learning how to quickly summarize your data and create interactive charts and dashboards. All right, so I hope this video has helped you get started with VLOOKUP. I know it can feel scary and overwhelming at first, but I highly encourage you to practice, even go back and rewatch this video, and it will definitely get easier over time. Now to help you learn even more, I've prepared a bonus challenge file for you. This will help test your skills and learn even more techniques and uses for VLOOKUP. And I also have a bonus video that walks through some solutions and I share additional tips and tricks to learn VLOOKUP. So I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. Definitely download that and check that out. Now if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below this video. And we'd also love to know what you're going to use VLOOKUP look up for now that you know how to use it. So leave a comment below with that answer as well. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.